Now we typically see three types of refrigerators in the RV space, and that is the residential style. We're seeing a lot more of the 12 volt DC refrigerators. And then we see a bunch of these absorption style refrigerators. Very old technology, still around, going strong. You'll know you have an absorption refrigerator by these telltale silver fins on the back side of the refrigerator wall. So the power source is that you either will have a two-way or a three-way. The two-way is operated by propane and 120 volts AC, and then the three-way throws 12 volts DC into the mix. All of those sources need 12 volts DC to even turn the refrigerator on, so your coach battery is really important. So let me throw in a couple of tips about optimizing its performance. Number one, this thing doesn't have a and so it doesn't circulate air on the inside of the fridge. So on that note, don't overpack it with food. And if you have the opportunity, cool down your groceries and your leftovers before you put anything inside there. It takes a while to get the temperature back down. Every time you put something warm in there, or when you open the door. Make sure you cool this thing down overnight. Plug it in and let it cool down overnight before you take off on a trip. They'll tell you four to six hours to reach proper temperature, but it really needs most likely overnight. Keep it level. You've heard that before and it's true. It's very important that when this thing is plugged in and turned on, that you keep it level. The coils on the back need to be at a certain angle to prolong the life and operate properly. Airflow is king and the airflow is happening on the back side of this refrigerator. That heat transfer is happening and extracting that hot air from the interior of this. And so cool air needs to be moving up over those coils. So you need to look at your exterior access panel. It's down low on the exterior of the RV. Look inside there and make sure that there's not any debris or anything that would block airflow. And also check up on your rooftop vents. Sometimes birds can make nests up there. Or there might be bugs or whatnot. So keep all that clear. Now let's talk about some troubleshooting. If you have ice on these fins back here. It's just too warm inside the fridge. Adjust your temperature. You can do it on your control panel or you might have this little thermistor. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little white plastic clip on one of those fins. If yours is adjustable, just move that up and down. If you have no power to the fridge at all that the control panel does not light up, that's probably a 12 volt problem. So look at your coach battery, make sure it's fully charged and you might check the fuse. So let's talk about what if this is working on propane but not on electric. I want you to do a few things. Look at the breaker in your electrical panel box for the fridge. Make sure that that hasn't tripped. There's actually a plug on the back side of this in your exterior access panel. Make sure nobody's unplugged that. And then also make sure that you're not exceeding the power capabilities for your coach. Like if you're a 30 amp, you might have some other 120 volt items on that is hogging all the power. And then lastly, if it's working on electric on 120 volt, but not on propane, there could be a couple of things. Make sure that you have propane and make sure that you're not in propane lockout. You might have had something calling for propane when you first opened the cylinder and that set you into lockout. So all you need to do is shut down all the propane appliances, head outside, turn your service valve to the off or closed position, wait a beat, and then open it back up. The other kind of lockout is if this tried to light three times and it was not able to ignite, it will shut itself off and you would have to reset the refrigerator, turn it off and on again and hopefully it was just a fluke and it'll turn on and light the next time so i hope these tips were helpful and i'll see you on the next episode